What's up, PassFit Tribe? It's your personal trainer, Coach Kozak. And I'm Claudia, and this is a total body strength training workout. Today's routine requires a pair of dumbbells, and the weight that you choose will be completely dependent on your fitness level. You will also want to have either a bench, box, or a chair nearby for a couple of the exercises. You can follow along with me for the standard moves. And you can follow me for some of the easier modifications. If you're ready to go, let's get started. All right, before we begin today's workout, we are gonna start with a dynamic warm up. First move is gonna be an overhead shoulder pullover plus butt kick. So we're gonna alternate right and left legs, bringing that heel back to your glutes, and then keeping both arms straight, bringing those arms up overhead with our biceps by our ears. So it's a total body move, warming up those shoulders, quads, hamstrings, glutes. Hit multiple muscle groups on this one. And the purpose of our warm up is to increase our overall body temperature. At the same time, we're gaining a little extra mobility work in, a little extra flexibility. And this is just the warm up, so you should be moving at a warm up pace, whatever that looks like for you. There will be plenty of time for the actual work coming up. Excellent. Getting that heart rate up a little bit here. Moving into the next move in five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, relax those shoulders. Feet are shoulder width apart for this next one. We're gonna do a bent over T rotation. Bent over at a 45 degree angle. Both arms relax straight down. Now, with your right arm, let's bring that right arm up as we twist and look at it. Return it back to center. Left arm now, look at that arm as we twist up and overhead. It's a great one to loosen up your shoulders, chest, back, as well as your thoracic spine, which is the middle back. Breathe throughout, get that core tight and engaged. You might get a little bit of leg working on this one too, just holding and maintaining this position. Breathing through. Not a race on this one. And as you're working through it, you should be feeling yourself get a little more range of motion as you're starting to loosen up here. It's also a great one to help you improve your posture if you spend a lot of time seated during the day, whether it's working at a computer, on a couch, driving. <laughs> Whatever that may be. Working on a couch, that's my kind of work right there. <laughs> Where do I sign up? I know, I wish. <laughs> Let's go five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, For this next one, we're gonna loosen up that backside and that posterior chain. Feet are a little wider than shoulder width with your toes pointed out. We're gonna do a posterior swing. Slight bend in those knees, hands out in front of you. Let's throw those hands in between your legs and then bring them up. So it's glutes back, glutes forward. Keep that head in line with your spine. And as you're going down, drive those glutes and hips backwards. So you have, you're starting with a slight bend in those knees, and then you're keeping that same bend the whole time. So you're just hinging at the hips. Don't turn this one into a squat, but instead you should, you should be feeling a stretch in those hamstrings, glutes, lower back, all working on this one. You're gonna have a nice neutral neck and spine. That's it. As you hinge at, at that uh, at those hips there. So that means you're not looking up at the screen as you're coming down, but allow your gaze to come down with you. And then squeeze those glutes up at the top every time. Getting those glutes engaged, getting them firing. Feeling some in your lower back too. Yep. Warming up that lower back. Definitely is gonna get some work in, some positive work in today. 
Let's do this one for five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Excellent. Time to start this workout. You I'm ready, ready to go? Let's do it. All right, I am too. So you are gonna need that either that bench, box, or step that we mentioned in the introduction for these first couple exercises. So we're gonna get ours ready. We're gonna use a bench today, but really anything that you can use in your home will work again, like a chair will work as well. So this first move we're gonna do is gonna be for our core and our back. We're gonna need one dumbbell for this one. We're gonna do a high plank dumbbell row. So we're gonna get into a high plank position. So that means almost like a push-up position with our core straight, back is tight. Now grab that dumbbell with one hand, supporting ourselves with our opposite hand, keeping your shoulders square. We're gonna pull back on that elbow all the way up, all the way down. Now, we're gonna do 12 repetitions on each side. So we are counting reps today. And as we're doing it, go ahead and get started at the same time as us. So if you're ready, you got your chair, bench, whatever you're using ready to go, keep that core tight and engaged throughout. Ready and begin. Pull back on that elbow every time, two. Making sure that our hips and our shoulders are nice and square. So this one's gonna work not only your back as you're pulling back, but also your core, your abs, that sh opposite side shoulder has to stabilize you. Anytime we're doing a row, go ahead and pretend like you're pulling back on that elbow with That's a 10, string. 11 and 12. So if you can, try not to rest. So just go ahead and switch hands, and now we got 12 on that opposite side. And begin. If you need to, you can come down and relax the cord, but ideally we're keeping that core engaged throughout without any rest. Again, pulling back on that elbow every time. Halfway. And you have those feet far enough back where you're really in that high plank position and you're not turning it into something like here. Two more. Excellent, almost there. Last one. Very nice. good. All right, for this next one, we're gonna work our lower body. We're gonna do a Bulgarian split squat variation. We are gonna need two, two dumbbells for this one. And I'm actually gonna do the body weight variation of this Bulgarian split squat. So you decide if you wanna use weights, in which case get two. Otherwise, you can body weight one works as well. So we're gonna put our back foot up on the bench and we can either do that with the ball of our foot or the front of our foot. Really, it's just a comfort thing, whichever one you feel works better for you. Now we're gonna keep our weight back, our shoulders back. We're gonna drop our weight straight down and we're gonna come back up. And when we do this, we're gonna do it with a three, one tempo. So we're gonna count three seconds on the way down. So it's one, two, three down. And I'm gonna jump up and repeat. And I'm just coming up. I am not jumping at all. So you decide which variation is gonna be best for you. We're gonna do eight repetitions on each leg. So weights or no weights, jump or no jump, you decide what's right for you. That's right. Back leg up on that bench chair and let us begin, nice and slow. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. And one second on the way up. Again, you wanna just come up or if you wanna jump, you decide which one is right for you. Nice and controlled. This one's gonna get those legs burning quick. Breathe. That's halfway. So we're breathing in on the way down and we're breathing out, exhaling on the way up. Two more. Very good, very good. Last one right here and then we switch. All right, same move, opposite Ooh. leg. Now, there's a good chance you're gonna feel it on both legs. You can go ahead and lean forward a little bit if you wanna get a little extra on that front leg. All right, and begin. One, two, three, one up. Repeat. This is a challenging move, so do not feel bad if you're just doing body weight on this one without a jump. Definitely leaves a lot of room for improvement and growth on this one. Halfway. Focusing on that breathing. And I know it'd be easy to race through these, 
but really get that three seconds on the way down. Last one right here. Oh Excellent. my goodness. All right, we're feeling it too, <laughs> Astro Tribe. You're not alone. So let's get that weight for your one, your one dumbbell weight for that high plank row. Yep. We're gonna go through this cycle two times. So two times through, catching your breath as we're setting up here into that high plank dumbbell row. 12 on each. In three, two, one, begin. Pulling back on that elbow every time. Get that breathing synchronized as well. Rep by rep here. Excellent, come on. Never said it'd be easy, but it will be worth it, Tribe. Come on. One into the next here. This is number 10, you have two more. 12, all right. Okay, switching it up, opposite side again. Stay in that plank. Yep, and begin. Trying your best to keep those shoulders square. Try not to rotate, try not to round your back. You wanna be a machine here. Every repetition looks exactly the same. Good, good, good. You got it, Tribe, come on. Two more. And 12. Excellent. Whew. Okay, now time for everybody's favorite, the Bulgarian split squat. Not really, I know it's a tough one. It's a tough one, but this is probably one of the best leg exercises out there. It's true. That's why we use it a lot. It works so good, so well. Okay, so go ahead and put that back foot up. Again, it's three seconds on the way down. Starting in three, two, one, begin. One, two, three, up. Again, repeat. Two, three, up. Keep that same consistent three seconds down. You got to try, come on. One into the next here. Woo. That's halfway. Keep fighting, keep pushing, keep working. We know it's burning. We know it's challenging, but that challenge is where change comes from. That's where our improvement's gonna come from. Last one on this side. Excellent, Oof. okay. Switch it up, same move. Try your best to get that front foot the equal distance away from your bench or support. And begin. One, two, three, up. Excellent. Any of these one leg squat variations, you use about 70% of your body weight on just that one leg. And that's before you even add additional weight. So if you're thinking, wow, this is hard. Well, that's because it's the equivalent of squatting with the barbell about 70% of your body weight. Come on, let's go. Two more, Tribe. Almost there, almost there. Come on. We're right there with you, Tribe. Last one. Nice and controlled on the way down. And up. Excellent Ooh. job. All right, you can move your bench or your chair out of the way for our next superset. Two exercises coming up. First, we're gonna be a hammer curl plus a press. We need two dumbbells. This one's gonna work our biceps, our shoulders, triceps. You'll notice most of the moves we're doing today are compound moves, so hitting a lot of muscle groups with just a short, efficient amount of time. That's right. Feet are shoulder width apart, palms are facing inward. We're gonna start with a hammer curl. Those palms stay facing and bring those dumbbells up to our shoulders. Now we're gonna press straight up overhead. Now reverse it down and then reverse curl on the way down. Control all the way. Control all the way. So it's four parts to this move. We're gonna do 12 repetitions in total. All right, beginning in three, two, one. Shoulders are back, hammer curl. One, two, three, four. So there's your four parts. And that's only one rep. That's it, curl, press, return, return. That's it right there, you got it, Tribe. You got the hang of it here. And you're gonna hear us focus on this a lot throughout today's routine, which is controlling that negative or that descent, that eccentric portion of the move. It's so very important, yet so often overlooked. 
yes, it would be easier to use momentum to throw these dumbbells up and then just allow them to basically fly back down, but it is not nearly as effective. If we want to improve our strength and our lean muscle mass, we must work on that time under tension, which is what we're doing right here. That's number eight. Starting to feel that burn kicking in. When you feel it, it's important that you remind yourself what brought you here today to begin with. What is it? What are you here working on, tribe? Two more. Every repetition is getting you just that much closer to your goal. Last one right here. Finishing strong. Whoo, burns so good. Yes. All right, I'm gonna up my weight a little bit for this next one. As am I. We're gonna, I'm gonna move into a stiff leg deadlift plus shrug. And I'm going to do a Romanian deadlift, deadlift plus shrug. So the big difference in this is how far we go down. Yep. Feet are gonna be shoulder width apart. Let's start with a slight bend in those knees. Dumbbells are facing us out in front of us. Now we're gonna hinge at the hips only. Keep our head in line with our spine. Back stays straight. I'm coming all the way down. And I'm going right past my knees, just a little past my knees. And then hips come forward, stand up, and then shrug. Bring those shoulders to your ears and return back down. 12 repetitions in total. Yep. Let's go. Hips back. Back stays straight. Now, if you can't go down as far as I am or as far as Claudia is without compromising your back, and starting to round at your shoulders, then don't. But we encourage you to stop at the point where you can no longer maintain that straight and flat back. Very and with the good. Romanian deadlift, you're gonna keep contact with your legs the entire time. Keep your dumbbells nice and close to the body. Hinge, nice straight back, neutral neck, and up. That's Strike. right. This one's gonna work your hamstrings, your glutes, your lower back, and your upper back all at the same time. A total posterior move. A phrase I heard over a decade ago and it's stuck with me ever since is your show muscles are in front and your go muscles are in back. That's nine. Which basically means the muscles that are most functional give you power, athleticism are all on your backside and the ones that kind of look pretty are often in your front but they're not as valuable and last one right here stretching those hips back and 12 very nice good love that one set those weights down now we're repeating repeating the superset so we're going back in that hammer curl plus press choosing that weight that you feel is appropriate for you. That's right, we don't want you to do any swinging or trying to use any momentum to press or even to bring those dumbbells up in a curl. That's it, it's always better to use a little lighter weight and stay in control. All right, we have 12 repetitions, hammer curl plus press. And three, two, one, curl, press. Straight up overhead, return, very good. Breathing throughout. Inhaling on the way down, exhaling on the way up. Very good. Keep that core tight and engaged. Good posture. And on this one, we're trying not to get our legs involved. We're working our legs today with other movements. So on this one, keep it to a strictly an upper body move. No push from those legs to get these dumbbells up. You're using a push, you're using too much weight. That's it. This one's working your forearms, biceps, shoulders, and triceps. Again, a very efficient move, getting a lot of work in with just this one exercise. That's number 10 right here. You have two more to go. Come on, almost there. We're feeling it too. You are not alone. Last one. And Zero. Excellent. Okay, we're moving back into that, either that stiff leg deadlift plus shrug or the RDL plus shrug. Again, you decide which weight is appropriate for you. I'm gonna drop my weight just a little bit on this one. So again, if any time during today's workout you need to increase or decrease your weight, we encourage you to do so. Here we go, 12 reps, feet shoulder width apart, hinging at those hips and begin. 
Head stays in line with that spine. Keep those shoulders retracted as well. So that means you shouldn't be hunched over reaching. But keep those shoulders in line with the rest of your upper body and your back. Dumbbells nice and close to your body, not out in front of you. That's it, drive those hips back as you go down. So you should be feeling that stretch in your hamstrings and in your glutes. Hamstrings is that back of your leg muscle. Good. One into the next here. And oftentimes people who are not used to working their lower back get confused like, oh, my lower back is sore. Well, that's a good thing. You wouldn't, you wouldn't complain if your arms or your abs were sore. So after today's workout, don't be surprised if your lower back is sore. Learn to tell the difference between a good and a bad pain. One to the next here. Here's number 10. You can have two more after this. Whew, almost there. This one's working your grip, hamstrings, glutes, and your entire back. Last one. Almost there, almost there. <sighs> Excellent job. All right, let's get this next superset started with a challenging push-up variation. I know Claudia is excited about this one, so you should be too. All right, uh, <laughs> yep. we're, gonna, we're gonna do a three, one tempo close grip push-up. So let's move to the floor. So we're gonna start with our hands in a close grip, which basically means they're in line with our shoulders. So not out wide like you might on a traditional push-up. I'm gonna do mine from up on my feet. And I'm down on my knees. And now when I say three, one tempo, just like before, we're gonna go three seconds on the way down, keep those elbows in, one, two, three, and then one second on the way up. We're doing 12 repetitions in total. Let's do it, tribe. In it together here in three, two, one, begin. So you're keeping those elbows in nice and tight to your body. One second on the way up. One, two, three, one second on the way up, that's it. Keep your core tight and engaged, back straight. You don't wanna have your butt up in the air on this one. Again, keeping those elbows in, don't allow them to flare out. That's five. And the purpose of this close grip position is to put more of the emphasis on our triceps. So it also makes it more challenging, as I'm sure you're noticing, between that and the slow tempo but I guarantee you it's working. Very good, very good. That's oh. nine, we have three more. Last three, fighting together, tribe, fighting together. Here we go, last two. 11, one more. Breathing in on the way down, and exhale on the way up. Shake it out, excellent. Okay, so the second move in this su first superset is gonna be for our lower body. We need one dumbbell for this one. We're moving into what's called an offset squat. So we're only gonna hold one dumbbell in our right hand. Feet are gonna be shoulder width apart. Do your best to keep your core straight, shoulder straight, so you're not leaning in this way, but stabilize. One hand out, feet shoulder width apart, weight back on our hips. And now we're performing a squat. Nice far down till those thighs reach parallel, back up. We have 12 repetitions with the dumbbell on this side. And begin. Nice and controlled here. Good. Not a race on these. Again, focusing on that time under tension. And the purpose of this offset squat compared to a normal dumbbell squat is that one, it forces our core to engage throughout just to keep our body stabilized. And then it also puts additional weight on that leg on the side that you're holding the dumbbell. So it's just an extra challenge that our body isn't usually used to. And remember that challenge is where our change comes from. Two more. If your body's not being challenged, it will not improve, it will not change. Last one right here. Excellent, okay, you can set that Dumbbell down to the side. And now back to Claudia's favorite, the three one. <laughs> <laughs> Keep picking on my wife over here. Okay, moving to the floor. <laughs> we all have our strengths and we all have our areas for improvement. That's right, and I should focus more on push-ups, but I just don't. 
some. <laughs> well, here we are. That's working my on, bad. Working on it to de together today, folks. <laughs> All right, so if hands are nice and close, up into that push-up position. Three, one tempo, let's begin. One, two, three, one second up. Good, again. So we're inhaling on the way down and then exhaling as we press up every time. And that doesn't just apply to this move, that applies to all movements. You're inhaling on the easier part and exhaling on the hard part of the movement. So it's a little different for every move. Halfway. Good, good, good. Remember, it's just the two sets of these. Keep that core engaged as well. Working your chest, shoulders, triceps, abs. All getting hit on this one. Almost there, Tribe, almost there. Two more. That's it, last two, you got this. We're in it together. Come on. Nice and controlled on the way down and then explode. Good. Oh my goodness. All right, good news is no more of those. That's over. Check those <laughs> off your list. Whew. Grab that dumbbell, this time in your left hand for our offset squats. 12 repetitions coming at you here. Feet shoulder width apart again. Don't slouch on this side. Boom, get those shoulders square. Right arm out, weight in our hips. 12 reps, let's do it. Weight back. Nice and controlled here. Keep those knees out. That's it, don't allow them to break in, but instead force them out. And if you start having trouble with them breaking in, a lot of times that comes from weak glutes. I'd recommend you spend a little extra time strengthening those glutes. Keeping your feet flat on this one as well. Shouldn't be coming forward onto your toes or falling back on your heels. Put all that weight midfoot. That's it, and drive straight up. Almost there. This is number eight. Last four of these tribe, you got it, come on. What'd you come here for, what is it? What are you working on? Staying focused on it right here, right now. Two more. Every squat's getting you that much closer. Last one. Boom, nice work. For this next superset, we're gonna perform two antagonistic upper body exercises. One's for the back, one's for the chest. We are gonna recommend you grab a lighter weight for this one. First one's gonna be a bent over, straight arm, reverse fly for 12 repetitions. I know the names on these get a little long sometimes. You did a good job there. Thank you. Feet shoulder width apart. We're gonna bend over on a 45 degree angle. Arms are straight as the name ensues. Now we're gonna pull back and return. Control up, control down for 12 repetitions. Again, don't be afraid to go light on this one if it's your first time. Do not. All no right. ego lifting here, right? That's it. Okay, ready and begin. Also, make sure that we're controlling that negative descent phase. Don't just allow those dumbbells to flop back down. Pulling apart with our back. This one's working your upper back, rhomboids, rear deltoids, which is that rear posterior shoulder muscle. Four more. All working at the same time here. Great move to help improve that posture and strengthen those upper back muscles. And last one right here. Excellent. Ooh, I like that one. All right, again, we said an antagonistic move here, so it's gonna be the opposite of that one. Again, using a light weight. I'm gonna go up just a little bit. We're gonna do a standing low dumbbell fly. So with a staggered stance, gonna put one foot in front, doesn't matter which. Weight in, in that back knees bent. Arms and hands out to your side, palms are up. Now using our chest muscles, we're gonna pull those dumbbells up, squeeze our chest, and return. Don't turn into a curl, but instead keep those arms straight as you pull them up and return. 12 repetitions, let's begin. Arms out to the side, pull up, squeeze those chest muscles, and return. Very good. Ooh yeah, I'm already feeling it in the chest. <laughs> That's it. Well, especially we've already hit the chest with a few other moves today, yep. so not the first one. More of a finisher here. Excellent. Breathe in on the way down. Exhale. 
as you fly up. Very good. Halfway point right here. Squeeze those chest muscles up at the top and control that way down, which tends to be the most challenging part. Again, it'd be a lot easier to just allow them to flop down, but fight that temptation. Here's 10, that's two more. Almost there, almost there. Last one. Whew, and that one's challenging me as well. My word. If you can't tell from my facial expression. <laughs> I don't have a good poker face I think face we both here. got pretty quiet in that last one. We did. All right, so moving back to that straight arm, reverse fly, hitting those upper back muscles. You choose your weight that works for you. If you need to raise the weight, lower the weight, we encourage you to do so. Arms are straight and pull back. Very good. 12 in total here. Squeeze those upper back muscles up at the top. Pretend like I have my finger in the very middle of your back. And as you're pulling those dumbbells back, I'm trying to squeeze that finger of mine. There's eight. Almost there, almost there. Come on. Fight to the end, tribe. Oh, yes. It's working. Whew. I can feel it working, Tribe. Hope right. you can too. I think I'm going to stick with the light weights this time. All right. Don't blame <laughs> you. Okay. If you want, you can go ahead and switch which foot you have in front just to make sure things are evened out. Yep. You're moving into that standing low fly. Last 12 of these. In it together. In it to win it. Let's go. Up. Control the way down. Bring those dumbbells out to your side as well. And do not turn this into a curl or you're getting your biceps engaged. But instead, allow that chest to take over, as well as you'll probably get some anterior deltoids, those front shoulder muscles as well. And that's all right. Lift them up. That's seven. Almost there. Come on. We're not gonna quit when it hurts. We're gonna stop when we're done. Two more. Last it, come on, last two. You got this, Tribe. Last one right here. And zero, well done. All right, Tribe, we're gonna end with an ab finisher circuit. We have three exercises going through this one two times, heading to the floor. We're gonna sit down on our backside, feet out in front of us. We're gonna lean back on a 45 degree angle, and we're gonna perform a V-sit pulse. So I'm gonna have my feet up on this one. And I have my feet on the ground. And you're maintaining this 45 degree angle. You decide which variation is right for you for this first one. Ready, set, go. Core stay tight and engaged throughout. If this one's too easy for you, then you're probably not back on that 45 degree angle or you need to bring those feet up. Just quick little short pulses. Back is straight, really engage and hold tight right there in your core. Very good, very good. More than halfway done with this first one. Focus, might need to go to your happy place on these abs. And focus on your breath as well. For five, four, three, two, one, zero. Next, we're gonna lie back on our backside. I'm gonna do a lying leg raise with my legs straight all the way up, all the way down. And I'm going to do a knee raise. Now you decide which variation is right for you. You also have the option on either variation to rest your feet down in between. That's right. Do not bounce them off the floor, but if you need to rest them, you can do so. Very good. Now I have my hands under the small of my back you can choose to do that, or you can put them out to your side. It's really just a preference thing, whichever feels more comfortable for you. But we do want to keep our lower back on the ground. That's it. If you feel like that lower back is coming up or arching, then we suggest you progress to or regress to a slightly easier variation. That's right. For five, four, three, two, one. Now we're going to do a lying leg twist or a lying knee twist. So my legs are straight and I'm going side to side. And my knees are bent as I move side to side. You decide which variation is right for you. Notice we both have our arms out to the side. Helps us keep our shoulders on the floor. Again, working at a pace that you feel comfortable with. 
and that allows you to maintain proper form. This one is an oblique blaster. Making sure to stay breathing throughout. Do not hold that breath. Almost there, almost there. Let's go last 10 seconds on this one. And five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, we're sitting back up now. We're moving back into that V-sit pulse. Again, you decide Ooh. if you want those feet up or down. Halfway done, folks. That's it. All right, the second round, this is where you may really need to get to your happy place. That's it. Focus on what brought you here today. Whatever you do, don't focus on those abs. Don't focus on that burn. Think about anything else here. Think about those goals. That's right. Think about what you're going to have to do to accomplish them. Day by day, putting in that work, doing what others won't do so you can have what others don't have. Breathing through here. Last 10 seconds. Come on, you got it. For five, four, three, two, one, zero. Lying down now. Moving back into either that lying leg raise or lying knee raise. It's you versus you here. Not you versus me or you versus Claudia, but instead just trying to get a little bit better each and every day. That's right, don't worry about me. Pushing yourself because nobody else can or will do it for you. Focus on maintaining that good form, keeping that lower back nice and glued to the ground. That's it. Whatever you, variation it is that accomplishes that for you. I want you to exceed your own expectations today. Every workout coming back, getting just that much better. For five, four, three, two, one, zero. Lying leg twists or knee twists, and that's it. Come on, finishing strong, Tribe, right here, right now. Last ab move. You were almost there. That's it, sprinting to that finish line. One into the next here. We are right there with you. If you need to switch it up and do an easier, variation and then we encourage you to do so but just keep moving here come on almost there almost there last 10 seconds try that's it here we go come on now for four three two one zero Whew. and that is it oh my goodness you made it Ooh. we made it <laughs> all right uh. You can actually stay down on the floor. Uh, we're gonna move into a cool down. And our cool down, first three cool down moves are gonna be down here, so. Kinda so yay. <laughs> so it kinda worked out well. <laughs> Give yourself a second here just to catch your breath. The purpose of this cool down is to allow our heart rates to come down slowly. And at the same time, we're gonna get some more, excuse me, some more flexibility work in. Legs are out straight for this first one. We're gonna do a seated hamstring stretch. So go ahead and let those feet stay relaxed. Don't pull back on the toes yet. Knees are down. And we're gonna reach as far as you can. If that's to your toes, great, but don't pull back on them. And go ahead and allow your head to come down. And if it's your ankles, that's fine too. Yep, and if it's right here, that's okay. This one's specific, it'll hit your whole posterior chain, but by not bringing your toes back, you speci uh, specifically are targeting those hamstrings back of the legs. And we're just holding, that's the whole move. Just a static stretch. For five, four, three, two, one, zero, up. Very good. Now we're gonna do a very similar move, but this time I want you to pull back on those toes. So you can either do that with your hands if you can reach, but if you can't reach, just still manually pull those toes back. This time you'll feel more stretch in those calves. Yes, I do. So again, still hitting the whole posterior chain, just with an extra emphasis on your calves. Pulling them back and breathing here. Now on any of these static stretches, you wanna hit about 85 to 90% of what you're capable of. Hitting that good stretch, but at the, not, the same time, not really inducing real pain. There's a happy medium here. For five, four, 
three, two, one, zero. Up oh, nice and slow. Big deep breath. Excellent. All right, next we're gonna move into a sprinter quad stretch. So this one is going to specifically stretch out those quadriceps. I want you to bring that right foot back. I'll show you a couple different variations here. The easiest one is just out to your side while staying up. And then if you feel good, you can come back. If you feel even better, you can lie all the way back. Next variation is more like Claudia has, where you actually tuck that foot under your glute. Now you decide between these, which is right for you. Usually after a workout like this, my quads are a little tight and this is usually good for me. But we're all different, we all have different flexibility levels. Mm -hmm. And again, we're trying to get to about 85, 90% of what we're capable of. So I'm not trying to kill it in this stretch, but instead just feel good in it. Nice big deep breaths here. Very good, slowly bringing that heart rate down. And we're gonna come up and switch sides in five, four, three, two, one, zero. Up, very good. Same move, just switching legs now. Again, you decide which variation's right for you on this one. And you may find that one side is tighter or looser <laughs> than the other. Again, totally common. Don't let that. Don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. No need to leave us any comment on that one. We'll just take care of that right now. <laughs> we love answering comments, by the way. Just try to get as many of them out of the way, as uh, questions out of the way as possible during the routine. <sighs> nice, big, deep breaths here. Excellent work, Tribe. For five, four, three, two, one, zero, come on up nice and slow. All right, by this time, hopefully you feel comfortable standing up, come up nice and slow here, no reason to pass out on us. We're gonna work our, work our way on over to either a wall or a door frame. We're gonna do a bent arm wall stretch. So let's take that elbow and arm bent at a 90 degree angle. You're gonna go ahead and put that flush flat up against the wall, get your body nice and close to that wall. And now we're gonna pivot and turn our body away. This one's gonna stretch our chest muscles, our shoulder. Oh yeah, this one feels good. This one feels nice, probably because I'm carrying a 18 pound baby around all day. Yeah, that'll really Ooh. get that chronic fatigue going in just a few different, ex a few different muscle groups. Yep, upper body for sure. Hold and breathe. It's a great one you can just do throughout your day to help you improve that posture. Feel those shoulders rounding, head and neck coming up. This one will help open you back up, help you restore that natural posture. Mm. Good for your chest and shoulders, bicep tendons. Gonna switch it up in three, two, one, zero. Same move, opposite side. Arm flat on the wall here. And pull, rotate your body away. It's the last cool down move we have here, nearing the end. Hope you're feeling as proud of yourself as we are of you. And of we are of ourselves. That's true. I mean, just to say, we're, you know, <laughs> right, we're just like you and that, you know, sometimes our workouts can kind of linger or hang over our head until right. we're able to accomplish it. Yeah, life happens. Yep, it does. But you know, one of the things we always tell ourselves when we're trying to get motivated to get that workout in is, well, just we're gonna feel so much better when we're all done. And, true. And it's true, so we try to remind ourselves of that. Not just about physical fitness, but mental fitness as well. These can really, really help you. That's it. Have a better mood. And three, two, one, zero, and relax. Awesome job. Excellent, you made it. You, did you it, made Coach it. Kozak. You, did you it. made it out there, tribe. Nice work. Thank you so much for working out with us today. We know you have a plethora of, of other options out there and wouldn't appreciate you choosing us more means so much to us. We'd ask that you please help support our mission of keeping these great workouts free. You can do so by downloading our free app. It's available for both Android and iOS. And you can also stop by our store, pick up some HazFit gear or our diet guide eating for life. Please also don't forget to like us on your favorite social media network. Again, thank you so much for working out with us today. I'm Coach Kozak. And I'm Claudia. And we will see you at your next workout.